Hey up everyone, this video is going to cover all the stuff you need to know for combat in victory bells. Let's go! Now a good way to look at the combat in victory bells is to think of it as a simulation of a battle between your bells and the enemy Morgana fleet, which will bring into account your bell stats as well as the stats on the weapons your bell is using, and then adding other factors like the weather of the map, the nodes you are going to, and the Morgana fleet you are encountering. Now the first thing you're going to need to consider before going into a map is the level of your bells, the level of the map, and the composition of your fleet. Now bells levels in comparison to the map levels will affect the accuracy in which your bells will be able to hit the Morganas, as well as the Morganas ability to hit bells. So if your bells are a lot higher level than the map itself, the chance of them being hit is going to be a lot lower and the chance of them hitting the Morganas is going to be a lot higher. Alternatively, if you go into a map with lower level bells, those bells are going to be easier for the Morganas to hit, while having a harder time to hit the Morganas themselves. The level accuracy will either depend on the level of the bell itself, or the level of the entire fleet. So having a single bell that is a lot lower level than the other bells in that fleet, for example, a bell that is 5 levels lower than the rest of the fleet is going to be more likely targeted by the Morganas, as the Morganas will see them as an easier target to hit. Now when choosing the bells for your fleet, you'll need to consider which bell will be your fleet commander, which you can choose by selecting the health bar insignia of the heaviest classification of bells in your fleet. This means that destroyers cannot be fleet commanders for light cruisers, light cruisers cannot be fleet commanders for heavy cruisers, and heavy cruisers cannot be commanders for battleships. So take that into consideration when choosing your fleet commander. Each bell has a different strategy when selected as their fleet commander, which can be selected by clicking the FC in the top left corner. Doing so will bring up a separate screen which shows the bell's tactic and stratagem, what each stratagem does for each division and how each division is divided up among bells. These fleet tactics and the order in which you will drag your bells into the fleet will help determine which division each bell is selected in, which is a handy tool to help you organise your fleet. Now once you have your bells selected, you are free to go to Sortie and peruse the map to find whichever mission you want to do. Alternatively, you can go to the compass at the bottom right, and get a detailed list of all of the missions you can run based on your level. These missions are divided into events, which will contain all of the missions that are in your dailies, as well as missions that contain vestures of event bells that are there for a limited time. Conflicts contain all of the missions that you have been yet to complete, and Conquests will contain any missions that you have complete. These lists will also show the possible resources you can get from each mission, as well as the weather of the mission which you can press on to find out how those weather conditions affect the map. Once you've selected the mission you want to do, and the bells you're going to bring onto that mission, you'll be brought into the sortie and you'll see a bunch of nodes. One node where the bells will start the mission, next to an exit node. You can move your bells to a connected node by either double clicking the node you want to move to, or by selecting it and then pressing end turn. This will order your fleet to move onto that node and engage any more garners that are on that node. Alternatively, if you have a bell that has scouts equipped, you will see a grey ring which will indicate scouting range. This ring size is determined by the scout's stats. And you should see a little indicator at the top of each node that will let you choose the number of scouts you can send out to a map with a percentage chance of the scout success rate. Scouting a node will let you see any Morganas that are currently on that node, as well as any resources that can be picked up there. Engaging a Morgana fleet on these scout nodes will also place you at spotted range, which is the furthest range you can enter a battle, which can be a bad thing if you've built your bell fleet for close range engagements. Once you've engaged a Morgana fleet, you'll catch a quick glimpse of the Morgana's fleet commander, as well as their fleet strength, before entering into the battle. Once you've entered the battle screen, your bells will be displayed at the bottom of the screen, while the Morganas will be displayed at the top. You'll also see a little eye in the corner to determine whether or not you have been spotted or if you have spotted the Morganas and battle will begin with your bells engaging the Morgana fleet, causing damage when they are in range. Range is determined by the chevrons or blue arrows above your bells. You can add these along with the arrows below the Morgana fleet to determine what range you are in the battle. No arrows will determine that you are in spotted range, two arrows will mean that you are in long range, four range will mean that you are in medium range, six will mean you are in short, and eight will mean you are in brawling range. Here is a little visual aid to help you determine what each of those ranges mean during the battle. Your bells will engage the Morganas within a number of rounds, usually beginning with an ambush or torpedo phase if your bells are in range to fire their torpedoes, and for if you have an aircraft carrier with bombers. Then you will continue to trade naval fire for each round until the Morgana fleet is destroyed, your bells are destroyed, or until either side is fatigued and will retreat, which is indicated by a black smoke screen over the bell or Morgana. 
Morganas will be destroyed when brought to zero HP or when they have taken 100% flooding, which is caused by torpedoes. Once the Morgana fleet has been destroyed, you will be brought to a victory screen which will display any vestiges you have gained during this battle. After that, you will enter an EXP screen which will display an MVP, as well as show any damage done to your bells that have caused them to go into a critical state. This is usually indicated by a yellow and black border around your bell, or a red or black border if that bell is the fleet commander. This means that the bell has been taken below 10% of their health, or over 90% of their flooding. They will not be able to continue in further battles without risking permadeath. You will then be brought back to the battle screen, where you can move on to the next node. Or seek to head to a port to repair bells that are below 10% health, as well as replenish ammo. Once you have defeated the final Morgana, your victory screen will also display a rank based on your performance in the map. Which rewards bonus EXP and vestures, as well as an S rank unlocking cruisers for that map in future. Cruisers are an alternative way for your bells to go out and get you vestures as well as supplies, depending on the bells that you are sending out. So if you were to send out a bunch of destroyers and light cruisers, you would be doing a supply run cruise, which would net you supplies such as fuel, steel, etc. But if you were to use heavier bells, like heavy cruisers up, you would actually start getting vesture drops for the bell. The amount of supplies or vestures you get from the cruise is depending on how long the cruise will take to complete. On the maps you will notice a little port icon. These are for you to port which can be upgraded before going into the missions by clicking the little icon in the top right corner. Which brings you to different nations ports in that area. Where each one can be selected per nation and then upgraded using a number of resources. Primarily ammo and steel and fuel, which will upgrade the port, which will increase its healing capabilities for when you are in combat. So you can just move to a port during combat if you have any damaged bells, select to spend some resources to begin healing them, and then for a set timer determined by the damage your bells takes, your bells will start to heal. But you can also end it early to allow your bells to get out sooner and just get them enough health to get them out of critical state. Now I hope this video will provide you with enough information to cover just the basics of combat and understanding map navigation. If you feel like I've missed anything out, feel free to mention it in the comments and I will make a later video updating what's been mentioned here. If this has helped you in any way, feel free to like and if you wish to see more Victory Bros content in the future, hit that subscribe button. This is Incinda signing off.